The California Fuel Cell Partnership is a collaboration amongst industry and government. We have members from the automotive industry, energy companies, fuel cell technology companies, as well as government from state, local, and federal levels. We're working together to promote the commercialization of hydrogen-powered fuel cell vehicles. Many years ago when we were dealing with trying to reduce smog in the face of our continued population and, and vehicle growth here in California, we looked and said we really need to have zero emission vehicles or something that's very, very close. And uh, there were two technologies available. One was battery electric vehicles. The other technology was fuel cell vehicles. Well, this particular vehicle it actually has a hydrogen fuel cell system in it. And what that system is, is we have high-pressure hydrogen stored in the vehicle. This fuel cell itself actually converts this electrochemically to electricity, which drives the vehicle. I tend to get comments about it is the sound or lack of it. In this particular vehicle, this platform, we have a, a compressor, which makes a little bit of noise. But overall, it's about as quiet as it can be. When we first started this program, you know, it, we had a lot of vehicle issues and stuff like that. I have to say that uh, we've definitely turned that around to where these vehicles are very reliable. We have them out in a fleet over the whole country. And uh, we're very impressed with the way they perform and handle and uh, their reliability. Oftentimes I get comments about how stable it feels, how it doesn't feel like a, a prototype. It feels very much like a car they could just go out and buy. And obviously the next question I get is, why can't I get it now? The most common comment I see is that the vehicle is really cool. When you get in the vehicle and you drive around in general, there's not much of a difference between that vehicle and a conventional vehicle. It drives about the same, better pickup in the city, better acceleration, a little quieter. But when they know that it's boarding hydrogen and has a fuel cell, it has this cool green feel to it. And that's what people respond to. We have real-world customers, so we'll have real-world feedback. The customer can cope with the infrastructure, with the vehicle durability, with the range issues. The customer compares the vehicle just to a normal, standard car. That's why we have custom operation, because um, it's not only important to have technology advancement, but also to, to listen closely to what the customer says, because at the end of the, of the day, if the customer does not buy your nice piece of technical equipment, the whole technology is a failure. But with a battery electric vehicle, you have to make the electricity somehow to recharge the batteries. With this vehicle, you have to make the hydrogen somehow. The hydrogen tanks are right under the rear seats. The fuel cell system is located under the front seats, the driver and passenger seats. The electric motor is up front. And then in the back, under the cargo compartment, there's a battery. And the battery works with the fuel cell to provide electricity to the electric motor. The battery does the same thing that it does in a hybrid car, which is called regenerative braking. And what happens is when we're slowing down, the energy that otherwise would have just been wasted through the brakes is actually captured in the battery. And then when you need power to accelerate or go up a hill, both the battery and the fuel cell can put uh, electric power to the electric motors. This vehicle is equipped with leak detectors that will immediately tell you if there's a leak, so you know to pull over, get the vehicle towed to a place it could be repaired. Hydrogen is very, very light. So if there is a leak, it tends to disperse very rapidly. The hydrogen storage tanks in these vehicles are incredibly well designed, very strong, fiber wrapped cylinders. They've done extensive testing with them to ensure that they're as safe as possible. It has a, a neat safety feature where there's uh, some little side pillars in the rear of the vehicle you can see. And there's tubes running up from the hydrogen tanks through those side pillars up to a pressure release valve, which is a little bump you see on the roof of the car. So if there's an accident, the system will detect a loss of pressure and the hydrogen will be immediately vented through the, the pressure release valve on the roof. You can measure hydrogen in terms of volume. You could talk about gallons or liters of hydrogen. But because the volume changes at different pressures, we tend to think of it in terms of weight. A certain amount of hydrogen is going to weigh the same regardless of what pressure it's at. As one kilogram of hydrogen stores as much energy as one gallon of gasoline. And this vehicle stores about two kilograms of hydrogen. Because it's under high pressure, that pump, when I clamped the nozzle onto the gas tank, it has to form a very tight seal. And unless the pump knows that there's a very tight seal, the pump won't even turn on. So it's got a lot of safety built into it. Right now, we're at a very interesting uh, stage of development of this technology. In some ways, fuel cells are an easier fit for buses than they are for cars. You don't get much cleaner than a fuel cell bus, that's for sure. It's a zero emission vehicle. We're the first to actually build a fleet of fuel cell buses for an actual heavy duty transit application. New Flyer Industries is the largest manufacturer in North America of heavy-duty transit vehicles. Currently have about 
17,000 uh, buses on the road at uh, almost 250 different transit agencies. Because of the fact that we had the Vancouver Winter Olympics, there was a drive to showcase and uh, demonstrate green technology. When the contract was originally tendered to do the fuel cell buses for the Olympics, we proceeded to uh, develop an initial uh, prototype which would eventually serve as the mold for our production. One of the big challenges with uh, developing a fuel cell bus is to make sure that it can operate in the uh, cold temperature environment. Once we were satisfied with that, then we proceeded with uh, the production to build the uh, 20 buses for the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. In most uh, ways, the vehicle went through our standard production line, our standard production stations. The only difference was that there were a few extra steps at certain points in the line where, you know, we had to install the fuel tanks and some of the other hybrid components, but we were able to incorporate that all uh, within our existing processes and equipment. Because we're a low floor design, which all our buses are nowadays uh, for wheelchair accessibility and ease of getting on and off for passengers, one of the challenges with that is that the bus is very low to the ground, so there's no room under the bus to really install much equipment. With the large number of components that are required for the fuel cell bus, in terms of the hydrogen tanks, the batteries, the cooling systems, all that takes up a lot of space. We ended up putting quite a few of the components on the roof of the vehicle, as well as in the rear engine compartment. From aesthetic standpoint, you would actually have a, a lot of trouble just from a quick glance telling a fuel cell bus apart from a regular bus. If you were to walk on and sit in a seat, you wouldn't notice much out of the ordinary in the stuff you don't see, which makes the technology interesting. The big challenge is operating a hydrogen fuel cell coach in cold weather. The primary byproduct of the chemical reaction is water. Of course, we run into the issue, what happens when you drop below zero degrees Celsius? If you don't design for that, you can certainly run the risk of freezing that water which can definitely damage portions of your fuel cell. One of the initial things we had to work on was a way to plug in the vehicles overnight to ensure that the fuel cell didn't freeze. The other big challenge is how do you ensure that on those cold days that you have enough heat available so that you can properly start the bus and then once the bus is running, how do you ensure that you have enough heat available so that you know everybody is comfortable within the vehicle? One of the aspects about the fuel cell bus design is that uh, it uses electric motors to drive the wheels. The fuel cell itself does not actually directly drive the vehicle. All it does is convert uh, hydrogen to electricity. So that electricity is used to drive motors and other systems on the vehicle. One of the advantages of an electric motor is that at very low speeds they generate a high amount of torque. Uh, the acceleration is very good. The other big advantage is the braking because we have an electric system on the bus with very powerful storage batteries and generators. We're able to regain energy from the braking system when uh, the vehicle stops. And not only does that increase the life of your brake pads and allow you to charge up your electrical system, but it also gives you a lot of stopping power. Hydrogen buses are designed to work very similar to the way the diesel bus as far as duty cycle and they're able to perform uh, all the same functions as a standard diesel bus. Our buses have a range of about 300 to 325 miles. Diesel buses and again this fuel cell bus. So depending on a route service they can be out from anywhere from a tripper run which is just a few hours up to 16, 17, even 18 hours without any trouble. These buses, because of extra infrastructure on the roof, for gas storage, for all the additional components, they're over 8,000 pounds heavier than the comparable diesel bus. But in spite of that, we're seeing as much as 100% or double the fuel economy over a diesel bus. The main thing everybody notices is how quiet and uh, smooth that the vehicle is in comparison to a standard diesel bus. There's no transmission on it, so it's very smooth, powers away very quietly. We have had some comments from riders that th the bus is actually too quiet. It can actually sneak up on them. They, they've been surprised when it pulls up to the curb and they didn't even realize it was there. With the fuel cell technology, 
this bus doesn't care where it, the hydrogen comes from. And the value of hydrogen in transportation applications is that we can make hydrogen from solar and wind and biomass. Here we're using natural gas. While it's not completely zero emission, it has some CO2 emissions. Well to wheel, it's still better than our regular diesel internal combustion engine vehicles. You're basically a large golf cart. And there's not a lot of maintenance on a golf cart. One of the largest maintenance items for any bus is the brakes. And with these vehicles having regenerative braking, we're hoping to realize better brake life and uh, then the cost savings associated with that. We're learning from these buses. We're learning from other examples throughout the world. All the supercomputers of the world, all the brilliant minds that delivered the technology in the first place can't think of every variable. And what we do here is we capture almost all the variables that they can't think of. And we're all learning from this, not just us as users, but the technology providers are seeing things that they couldn't replicate in the labs. We're very much committed to looking at alternative fuels to improve our environmental footprint. Zero emission from the tailpipe, virtually no noise from the engine, and the potential of addressing global warming, climate change issues, sustainable energy supplies to fuel our vehicles, to help us reach energy independence. Our end state goal is commercialization so that all of the transit buses in the United States, we would like to see as zero emission fuel cell buses. Funding provided by the U.S. Department of Energy's National Energy Technology Laboratory. The Energy and Environmental Research Center's National Center for Hydrogen Technology and the members of Prairie Public.